once in a village called Obidi. An orphan girl named Ada lived with her grandmother. Her parents died when she was very little. Every morning, Ada goes down to the river with her friend Ene to fetch water for Mama. They were like sisters and loved each other's company. Mama told Ada never to go down to the river alone. It was a narrow road that had thick sprouting bushes on both sides and it gets lonely as the sun goes down. One afternoon, Ada was preparing to go to the stream with Ene. Mama told them not to go that day. Ada, Mama has fallen asleep. Ene whispered to Ada through the window. But Mama said we should not go today. She will know. Ene was very persuasive. Ada hesitated at first but finally agreed, disregarding Mama's instruction. She quickly got ready and followed Ene. They walked down to the river in all excitement. As she was walking with joy, the air was warm and sounds of whispering birds jumped from tree to tree. Along the narrow path, beneath the bushes, something was lurking in the shadows. Ada began to notice the ruffling trees. Somewhere in the background, something was there. She thought she hesitated her slow pace when she heard faint footsteps behind. But Ene was walking very fast ahead. Just as soon as she wanted to tell her friend, a scary looking man jumped out of the bushes, wielding a machete behind her. He was wearing a mask with intricate markings all over. There were markings of Agobo too. Anna screamed for help and picked up running as fast as her little feet could muster, but it was of no use. The man soon caught up with her. Anna watched in horror as the masked man pulled a handkerchief over Ada's nose, causing her to pass out. The Agabo too was a secret club known throughout the village for their diabolic practices. They were accustomed to sacrificing young virgin girls to their deity Agaba every first day of the month. Seeing that Ada has been captured, Ene turned to hurry for help. But something bad happened. She fell into a pit, a trap that was set by the cultists captured them. Her head was spinning out of control from the fall, and soon everything went dark for Ene. Ada woke up in a dimly lit hall. As she looked around, a thick pungent odor filled the air. Her eyes darted from one oddly heap of mangled items to what looked like flesh on a stick. There were touches of coal and a major bonfire at the center. Yes, some men were dancing around. It was Agaba Shrine. She had been brought there. Standing just adjacent to her was a scary looking witch doctor making incantations to Agaba. Few minutes later, the witch doctor turned and started looking at her. There was pure evil in his eye. Ada tried not to make direct eye contact as she secretly scanned her environment for Ene. But Ene was not there. Is she even alive? She must be hiding somewhere or getting help, Ada thought. Who are you, Beloved, the witch doctor? I am an orphan. Her eyes were shaking. I am just an innocent girl. Ada begged the witch doctor not to hurt her, but he paid her no attention. Shortly, the ritual began. With loud chanting and dancing, drums rolled out and the men burst into a frenzy. I am going to offer you as a precious gift to Agaba, said the witch doctor. Ada began to cry. She wept bitterly. In a flash of wonder, it began to rain. The rain started slowly and soon started pouring down. One by one, the torches that illuminated the shrine were put off. Then lightning and thunder began to crackle. It was as if the god of the sky spoke in anger. A cloak of darkness 
descended on the shrine, forcing the men to retreat to their tent while they wait for the rain to subside. This made the witch doctor pace angrily for minutes non-stop. Ada was left on the floor, both hands bound. The harsh beating from the downpour on her flesh, she crawled into one of the sheds. Then she saw a sharp piece of metal on the floor and immediately started brushing her hands against it. The more she thought of Ene, the harder she stroked. She regretted ever disobeying mama. Only if I had listened to her instructions, she said to herself. Summoning courage, Ada broke the ropes and ran out. Amid all the rains and thunderstorms, she could hear the loud noises from the camp from a distance, but she was determined to leave the shrine. After hours of running in the rain, through the thick of the bushes, she stumbled and fell into a river. Ada could not swim, and the current flowing through the river was very high. She struggled but the tides overpowered her. At the point of drowning, she looked up and there was a hand reaching out. She immediately grabbed the hand, pulling her out of the deep end. The hand was that of a woman. She had very long and flowy hair, almost covering all her face. At first, she was terrified. She wanted to run, but the woman with the flowy hair said to the young girl, do not be scared. I won't hurt you. She asked her, what are you doing inside the bush all alone, young girl? Ada told her she was running away from the Agabo too and fell into the river. She explained how she was kidnapped and what she had gone through. To Ada's surprise, a lady pointed at a hut not too far from her. She told Ada that she found another girl almost the same age with her, lost in these bushes. Ada immediately knew it was Ene that she was talking about. Ada was very happy that she finally met someone who wanted to help her. She ran out of the hut and saw Ene lying down looking exhausted. Ada was overjoyed. They embraced each other. The woman told Ada something she never forgot. Follow the river. Follow the river and you will reach your village. Ada thanked the woman and together with Ene, they set out. They followed the woman's instruction. When they returned to Obidi, Mama was so pleased to see her but was already preparing to go searching for them. Ada had learned her lesson never to disobey Mama. Okay. But who was the lady with the long wavy hair? Why was she in the bush and why is her hair long? Find out in our upcoming tales and subscribe for more.